Levi, leaving Levi because Jesus should have left Levi. Many would leave Levi. I would probably leave Levi. And you would probably leave Levi. Maybe you're better than me. We'll find out here in a few minutes when I ask you, who likes taxes? Where's that amen I heard earlier? Wait, you know, Marvin, even that amen, hallelujah, you taught them. Yes, you would leave Levi too. The reason I would leave Levi, the reason most of us would leave Levi is Levi is the tax man. And everybody likes services. People don't like taxes. In fact, I know of a whole nation that started out trying to avoid Taxes. And we celebrate it every year in a few months. I would leave Levi. You would leave Levi. United States would leave Levi. Nobody wants to be with the tax man. Even worse, when the tax man has an army behind him to enforce the extraction of of extortion. Yes, the tax man in the time of Jesus had the military force of the Roman legions, the centurions, to abstract their extortion money. And when I say abstract extortion money, I mean it just like that. Tax collectors, you see, unlike our tax collectors, did not receive a fee from their employer, the Roman government. Instead, what the Roman government said to them is, here is the unreasonable extortionary level of tax we want from these Jews to make sure they could never amount to anything to, to become a, a body of power Go get that amount and your pay will be whatever else with the help of the centurions you can abstract from them on top of our extortionary rates. And so in the time of Jesus, paying taxes were paying your oppressors to oppress you. So even worse, if you were the tax man. Because if you were the tax man, you were first to do, because they were smart enough to avoid revolts by at least letting the extortioner be one of them. You were a Jew who was literally a traitor. Literally. You had committed treason against Israel for the sake of Rome, the oppressing government. And you had the force of the military behind you to take what it was you wanted to take on top of the extortion rates the Romans were taking. So you can see why people were willing to leave Levi. As quickly as you could get away from Levi, you got away from Levi before he asked you about that other field that you bought halfway through the year that maybe the Romans don't know about. You didn't want Levi asking you any extra questions because extra questions resulted in extra information which resulted in higher taxes. Everybody was leaving Levi Jesus, on the other hand, had his own group of people that were difficult to leave, and they were the Pharisees and the scribes and the religious leaders in Israel, and they were already upset with Jesus, really upset with Jesus, because he healed a crippled man of palsy and told him to pick up his bed and go, and, 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 and 
they said, how dare you tell that man? Like, we don't care that you healed him. We're not even impressed that you relieved him of his suffering. But how dare you tell the man his sins are forgiven? He is committing extortionary, traitorous treason in the very face of Jesus. And he kept his Jesus' eye. I mean, this is not the penitent woman in John 8. This is not the woman who is broken and crying. This is not even Zechariah up in a tree trying to see Jesus. That's not what's going on here. This is not the woman with the issue of blood forcing her way through the crowd to get a hold of the hymn of Jesus. No, that's not who this is. This is a disgusting, degraded, Deplorable. Destructive. Deliberate. Dutiful. Sinner. Sinning right before Jesus' eyes. Wonder what Jesus will do. He will do this. He will say, come, follow me. This is disturbing to many of us. This is disturbing to many of us. Jesus says to Levi, in the act of committing oppression to other innocents, come, follow. You see, if we don't invite sinners to spend time with Jesus, see, Jesus knows what we don't, right? Because I asked you how many good sinners we have here. I didn't get a lot of takers. I asked you how many of you like taxes. I didn't get a lot of takers. Jesus isn't afraid of taxes. He'll just pull a coin out of a fish and say, oh, here we go. Because he has a relationship where he depends on his father. Not his anger. Amen. You see, we are offended by Jesus because we are good scribes and good Pharisees and good law keepers and good, good, good rabbis and, and we know that sinners don't get to follow Jesus. Only the righteous do. But Jesus knows what we don't. Jesus knows unless you invite sinners into your world, unless you surround yourself with loving and caring for sinners, unless you can embrace sinners as if they're a part of the family, sinners never get exposure time. Sinners never get Face time, sinners never get access to Jesus. Because there is no one out there who is going to go and tell them about Jesus if the high and the holy in this church can't. The tax collectors, as they come into the dinner at Matthew's house or Levi's house, whichever name we want to call him by, <laughs> and they are like, we heard that Levi's here. Are, are we welcome? You know what they say about Jesus. <laughs> they say that, you know, he's the kind of guy that if you hang around with him, you'll get into trouble. You know what they say about Jesus. He's not a good influence on your children. 
you know what they say about Jesus? He hangs around with sinners, tax collectors, prostitutes, immoral people. That's what they say about Jesus. You know who the they are? It's the Pharisees, the scribes, the lawyers, the church members, the teachers, the elders, the elevated, the ones who can't admit they're good sinners, they just say they're not sinners. And you know what they do? They go to Jesus, not directly, they go to Jesus through his disciples. They go to Jesus through his followers and they say, do you really want to follow someone who eats with these people? I got the same question. If you're following Jesus, it means you're going where he's going, I hope. That, you know, just to break it to you, is literally what the definition of follow means. Oh, yeah, I, I know you're thinking, but wait, I don't do that. And I have to say, well, don't say that out loud because that means you're not following Jesus. I, I, I know sinners don't always have tofu options. <laughs> and I know sinners sometimes have disgusting habits that we find offensive. And I know sinners have kinds of music that, that, that makes the music at Solid Rock seem like lullabies. I just got to ask you, I got to be a good Pharisee today. I mean, I'm a religious leader, right? I got to be a good scribe or law keeper, right? How many of you believe in the law, the Ten Commandments? Anyone out there? Oh, yeah, you're fast on that one. <laughs> We're so fast with the taxes, but you're good on that one. I just got to hold the standard high for you. Be a follower, to be a disciple, it means you're following Jesus to all the places Jesus goes. Now don't tell me the music's getting too rowdy. Don't tell me we, we, we would rather not go to homeless shelters. Don't tell me that, that nursing homes have a certain smell about them and we don't mean pine salt. Don't tell me we don't want to start an addiction recovery program right here in our own building because we don't know who might come. But isn't that kind of the point? Every church needs a few good what? Sinners, you're beginning to catch on. You see, what happens when you don't go to sinners, when you don't follow Jesus to sinners, what happens is... The church has to bring the sinners to you because you're not going to them. And if you're in a situation where the church has to bring the sinners to you, then you're in a situation where your church is following Jesus, but you might not be. And let me tell you, just as it was in the time of Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes, there are lots of people in synagogues. There are lots of people in the right day of worship. There are lots of people faithful to Torah and, and the teachings. But they're not following Jesus. They show up just in time because they know when the rabbi is going to give, give the message and then they will not have broken their Sabbath day journey to get there and leave. But they would have broken their convenience to be there in time 
for Sabbath school or to sing or, or, or to stay late to eat with each other or to have a program. So what is the situation when, when, when we don't follow Jesus to sinners so the church brings us to sinners so we don't want to be with the church anymore? Start limiting the amount of time that we spend at church because they got sinners over there now. That music, man, I think you could dance to it. I, reminds me of when I was in the clubs. Oh, gee, we might be able to get someone from a club to come then. And it's not going to be anything like what they listen to. See, if you're not following Jesus, then you're not seeking out sinners. And if your church is seeking out sinners for you and you stop coming to your church, then you're not following Jesus. You're not following the church. You're probably seven days or at least six days and 23 hours of the week of the sinner. And you better hope that there are better followers of Jesus in your church who will go get you than who you were to your followers, fellow sinners. So Jesus comes out and there they are. It's the, the teachers, it's the, the, the pastor, it's the rabbi, it's the elders. And... and and, and they're saying to, to, to Jesus' disciples, who are these people at the dinner? Why does your master eat with them? And, and the scribes and the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with who? Tax collectors, who you already admitted you don't like. said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? They're focused on the negativity of the goodness of God. That's a mouthful. Let's let it sink in. They're focused on the negativity of the goodness of God. You, you, you should be catching on. There shouldn't be any negativity to the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone out there today? Amen. I know I got a mic now. <laughs> They're focused on the negativity of the goodness of God, but there shouldn't be any negativity in the goodness of God. It resides in the heart and the mind and the prejudice and the ignorance of man. Amen. God's mercy knows no bounds. God's mercy knows no limits. God's mercy always seeks out goodness. God's mercy always seeks out love. God's mercy always seeks out sinners. Sinners seek out excuses to escape from other sinners. What is Jesus going to say to these people? What can he say to these people? What would you say to these people? Jesus does my heart well. He just calls it like it is. In essence, he said, I'm not your pastor. I am not your pastor. I pastor a different crowd. I pastor a different breed. I pastor those who sin and admit it not those who sin and stay away from church so nobody finds out. I pastor a different group of people. I pastor those who look for righteousness that they don't even know exist. You see, it's true that Levi was caught in active sin, 
by Jesus, but it's also true that his fellow tax collectors sought out Jesus when he saw, when they saw that Jesus accepted people like Levi. I wonder, I just wonder, I don't know, I wish I knew, I wonder, I don't know, I wish I knew, but in order to know, it would have to happen, I wish I knew what happened when sinners sought out churches because Christians sought out sinners. That's the point of what Jesus says. When Jesus heard it, he turned to them and he said, those who are well, they have no need of a doctor. Those who are well, they have no need of a physician. Those who are well, Those, but those who are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but who? Sinners. The sinners. Jesus says, I came not to call the righteous, but who? Sinners. I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. I, I got to ask you again, doesn't every good church need a few good sinners? Amen. Because if you're in a church that has no sinners, you're in a church that is not on the same mission as Jesus. Sometimes we conflict. Sometimes we butt heads. Sometimes we have conflicts and disagreements. Sometimes we, we, we are not compassionate enough. Sometimes we are difficult. Sometimes we run out of food at potluck. Sometimes all kinds of things happen. And you know why they happen? We are sinners. Emphasis on the we. And the good news is Jesus came for the we. The question is, are you part of the we or are you still confused about every good church needing a few good sinners? Because let me tell you something. If you're not a good sinner and by a good sinner again, so no one calls the conference office, a good sinner is a sinner who has the grace of Jesus applied to their life Amen. and is on a sanctification process, but they're still a sinner. You know, if you want to man up to the level of the Apostle Paul, you might say chief of all sinners instead of one that's almost better. The good news is Jesus came for us. And the good news, if we would stop leaving Levi, if we would stop leaving, like you're not going to have the solution for Levi. You're not going to have all the fixes for Levi. You're not going to be able to straighten out Levi's life. All the, Levi's made a mess. Let's just be honest about it. But you can still love the mess that Levi made and Pray and work with Levi. You may not fix Levi right away. I don't think Jesus fixed Levi right away. I don't know how many times Jesus might have went back to that booth to pull Levi out. And I don't know how Jesus advised Levi to do with his life's earnings. I don't know. I'm not told. But you got to love Levi. It's kind of like that old saying, Love them or leave them. Because that's really the truth of it. You either love Levi or you leave him. It's like this young woman who became engaged, this guy, Rudy, and 
She was deeply in love with Rudy until Rudy started doing Bible studies with the pastor. And Rudy became a little less fun. You see, she liked Rudy how Rudy was. And so the closer it came to baptism time for Rudy, the more Rachel began to report to the pastor all of Rudy's misdeeds. Because, kind of like the elder brother we talked about last week, she didn't want Rudy crowding out her inheritance. And so she started to go to the pastor and, and complain, you know, I don't know, maybe you need to work with him for a few more months yet. Maybe, may, you know, maybe next year, Pastor. The pastor looked at her and said, Rachel, what's really going on? Yeah, I know, even in studies, sometimes a word slips out of Rudy's mouth that I wish didn't. Yeah, I know Rudy probably watches some shows that I wish he didn't. Yeah, I got this crazy book Rudy dropped off that he thought I should read. But Rachel, what's really going on? Rachel looked at her pastor and said, I grew up in this church. I lived 23 years without a drop of alcohol. I never have tasted bacon in my life. I went to every vacation Bible school. Rudy hasn't even been here a month for every year I have. Why does he get in so easy? Like I said, always comes down to loving them or leaving them. Jesus stayed by the booth of Levi. When everyone told him he should be leaving Levi, Jesus knew he was finding Matthew. And Jesus, like he always does, keeps changing people's names when he changes their character. And Levi became Matthew. And he wrote the longest account of the life of Jesus that we have. Think about it. Our mission statement is based on Matthew 28, the last chapter of a dirty, disgusting, deplorable, treasonous tax collector. And everything we do is based on words he wrote. You can't fix everyone's problem. You don't know how to fix everyone's problem. You've not been called to cure every disease. You've not even been called to give your home remedies. Don't bother. You've not been cured, to, called to set bones. You have simply been called to set appointments with sinners, with the great physician. Set up appointments 
with the great physician and sinner? You are his medical representatives in the field. We call you spiritual medical missionaries, otherwise known as disciples, people who follow. No sinners, no disciple. No disciple, no Jesus. No Jesus, no Father. No Father, you're a sinner. Get your circle. Let us leave Levi with Jesus that he may become Matthew. that too. We're following the footsteps of a good man. We're on our way to lunch. I can smell it coming up the stairs. And I even shut both sets of doors. That's how good the lunch is. Levi I went to a great lunch. And he led sinners. Maybe you're not leading sinners to Jesus because you're not lunching with Jesus enough. How's your time with Jesus? How's your walk with Jesus? How's your talk with Jesus? Jesus talks with you through music. Jesus talks with you through prayer. Jesus talks with you through Bible study. Jesus talks with you by spending time with those fellow sinners you call a congregation. How is your lunch with Jesus? You can measure your time with Jesus directly and proportionally by one bearable only. How many sinners it leads you to be in contact with each day and each week and how you feel about them. There are those of you who need baptism. There are those of you who need to prepare for baptism. There are those of you who need to join the church. I don't need to preach a second sermon on that. You already know who you are. It's time. It's been time for a long time. I'm doing a baptism in June. You could still get in. Some of you need to get in. And some of you have time to get in. Getting in here is getting in a place. We're going to love you even when we don't have the solutions to your problems. We're going to love you and make repeated appointments with the physician for you. Marvin, as they fill out their car, give us one more. 
the world be the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Father, as I stand here praying, you have shown me the hand of someone shown me the hand of someone, the card of someone. I don't know who, but you've shown me that they are close. You've shown me that they are wondering, is this call for them? Are they to make a decision now? Are they to heed the words, I have decided? Is this day, is this message, is this sermon for them? Father, you've shown me their hand and you've shown me their blue card. You've not shown me what they will do. Father, today is the day. Don't go back to the booth. Don't go back to taking up collections for the devil's servant. No turning back. No turning back. Father, may that song ring in the hearts and the mind of us as a congregation all week long when we see a sinner and we want to leave Levi. We want to leave Levi because we have an appointment. We want to leave Levi because we work tired. We want to leave Levi because we got better things to do. 